Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. Today we're going to look at one way Bethel says how to share the gospel. Let's jump right in. This is a clip from Chris Vallotton's series on the fivefold ministry. In this episode, he interviews Chris Overstreet on how to share the gospel. Today we have Chris Overstreet, who actually carries the office of evangelist. Just a quick word on the way they use the word office of evangelist or office of a prophet. In the New Testament, the concept of office speaks to functions and tasks rather than status and position. Our office is simply our role in the body and in the relationship to the gifts God has given us. Unfortunately, Bethel and the New Apostolic Reformation use the term office in a hierarchy of leadership power, just as we saw in the last Fivefold Ministry video, where Chris and Danny Silk talk about apostles and prophets having more favor in God's eyes, which we showed from Scripture is not true. But they love to be respected by men, which is why they do this. And in the Bible, there was actually only one named evangelist. And Chris, a little trivia, it is? Philip. Philip, Philip. And uh, and so and he worked with the apostles. Uh, we hear a lot about Philip and the apostles. And today we're talking about uh, you as our Philip. You are Philip. Chris o- Overstreet is our uh, one of our evangelists, and uh, we've sent him out. He's been, uh, if you will, apostled from this house. He's very much, we're his fathers, and he's still very much uh, in connection with us and under our relational authority. Exactly what I'm talking about. The pride of position these self-appointed apostles and prophets have. Notice how he compares Chris Overstreet to Philip the Evangelist and emphasizes his relationship to the apostles, obviously connecting that to his relationship to so-called apostles in Bethel like Bill Johnson. And um, and I'll just start asking questions. And Chris, you just pop in with new ideas that yeah. around this subject. Whatever the Lord gives you is great. And we'll just have a, a dynamic uh conversation. So the process, uh, lots of people are asking this question, Chris, what was your process or your journey with the Lord before and after you were ordained or commissioned as an evangelist? Tell us a little bit about your journey, not so much just about your testimony, but more your journey as, as yeah. becoming the, this, this, this fivefold office of evangelist. That's a great question, Chris. And um, to the audience, I would say, you know, I remember being in YWAM and Chris, you actually played a big role of this. You called me out and then I was going to be an evangelist like yeah. Cambia, that miracle signs and wonders would be following my life. And so for me, I, I think to answer that question, um, I took that word that you shared and I took that word and I prayed over it for months. And back in the day, we had cassettes. I would listen to this recording over and over and over again. And so the process for me was, number one, believing, believing the word of the Lord over my life. This prophetic declaration. The prophetic declaration. That was the call of God that was on my life. Valaton just seems so puffed up as he emphasizes his prophetic gift and that he was accurate in saying that Overstreet was going to be an evangelist. I'm going to skip forward to where he actually gives an example of how to share the gospel, but I'll leave the full link below. I'd like you to talk through, like, how do you actually lead somebody to the Lord? You know, I understand there's, you know, this is a, there's 10 million ways, and, and I know you. Mm-hmm. And I know that you have this whole prophetic thing on you and that you don't have a cookie cutter thing. Tell mm-hmm. us, you know, just a just a Reader's Digest version of for people who have, maybe they've never led someone to the Lord. Like they wouldn't even know, like, yes, I'd love to lead someone to Jesus, but I, I don't really know what to do. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, and in a general sense, Chris, what would you say to those folks? How would you how would you what, how would you train them? Yeah, first of all, I would say, Chris, um, for every individual that's watching right now, I would say that the Holy Spirit is the greatest evangelist. And so yeah. it's the Holy Spirit that's going to bring about conviction of sin, which is really important for people to understand because um, there's this key word and it's called repentance. And so in order for someone to come to Christ, there needs to be an awareness of their need for Christ. And so that is the role of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So I'll yeah. it first. Because what we don't want is we don't want people just having people pray a prayer where they don't understand what they're praying. And the goal is just to have them repeat a prayer, which it's not. Nowhere in the Bible will see that. 
Um, so I would say this, I'll spell out the ABCs and then I'll spell out good news really quickly. And then I'll relate it to individuals begin to communicate the gospel and see people come to Christ. Uh, number one, um, ABCs, uh, it is uh, admit, admit that we need Jesus because we've got sin. Um, B, believe that Christ is the son of God, that he died on the cross and he rose again. And number C, confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And so I, I, will, I will say this, the good news is this, God loves us and he created us in his image. We were created in the image of God. Uh, it's our sins though that separated us from God and yeah. our sins can't be taken away by good works or good deeds. But deliverance came through Jesus Christ on the cross. So good. With, no one has to go to hell. With Jesus is eternal life. And the moment someone repents and turns to Jesus Christ, they shall have a life. And life starts the moment they say yes to Jesus. Key, key word repentance. When you're sharing the gospel with someone, um, we need to trust that the Holy Spirit uh, is able to convict. And what I will do is I'll ask this simple question. Do you believe that Jesus is the son of God? And then I'll interact with them. If they say yes, I'll say, is there anything, do you believe that he died on the cross and he rose again? And if they, if they say yes, I'm, I'm looking for the temperature. Yeah. You know, yeah. responding. Yeah. What the spirit is doing in their life really, right? Yeah. These, are, these are just questions to see what the Holy Spirit's actually doing in them. Exactly, Chris. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then I, I will say, is there anything holding you back from receiving forgiveness and repenting of your sins? And, and if they say no, I'll say, I want to pray with you. There's no magic in the words. But if you believe with all your heart, the Bible says you'll be saved. And, and it says in Romans 10, 9, that if you confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, and you okay. believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you should be saved. And then I have not pray a prayer like this. And this is something that anyone that's watching right now uh, can, can utilize. I'll say something like this. Uh, Jesus, forgive me of my sin. I receive you as my savior, my healer, and my deliverer. And I renounce any other spirit that I've invited in my life because of guilt, shame, or pain. Jesus, I repent of my sin. Forgive me. I give you my life. Fill me right now with your Holy Spirit. So good. And just as you've forgiven me of my sin, I choose right now to forgive others that have done me wrong. And then I take them through a time of deliverance of yeah. forgiving other individuals. Yeah, so important. I, I would say that, Chris, there's no perfect prayer. It's just having people understand what they're doing and they're repenting and they're turning to Jesus. Now, for the most part, this was a pleasant surprise to hear someone in Bethel preach that way. For the most part, he explained sharing the gospel quite well. He hit on some key things that we rarely hear anybody talk about in this movement. We're going to break down his approach and look at a few things, but before we do that, you may be asking, if you think it's such a good presentation, then why are you sharing it? Well, because I do believe there is hope for people in Bethel. I think there's people in Bethel that are saved, but deceived in areas and want to encourage us to continue praying for them. With that being said, they are right in saying that there is no one way to preach the gospel. Jesus preached law to the proud and grace to the humble. And could someone get saved through Overstreet's way of preaching? Absolutely. As he said, it's the Holy Spirit who brings conviction of sin, and it's God that draws us to him in repentance. With that being said, he does say a couple of strange things. He says that the good news is that God loves us and has created us in his image. Now, while that's good to hear, it's not the good news or the gospel message. To proclaim the good news, we must first understand the bad news. He does say that we've been separated from God because of sin, but the problem is that he never explains what sin is. He talks about repenting from sin, but doesn't explain what repentance is or what the sins are that we are repenting from. Another thing he focuses on is if they believe Jesus is the Son of God. And while that's a good start, I'm sure most of us would say that before we were saved, we may have gone to church for years and believed that, but were not truly born again yet. We know that even the demons intellectually believe that, but they don't have a committed saving faith in Christ. 
He correctly says that it's not about saying a prayer, but by the end, he's getting them to say a prayer without understanding what the sin is that they're being forgiven of. And this is so important. I know when I was saved, it was the realization that I had broken God's law and that the penalty of sin is death and hell. And that's exactly what I deserved. Broken and in tears, we cry out to God and admit that only Christ can save us and ask God to have mercy on us. So in conclusion, this is not a post overly criticizing Chris Overstreet. I'm thankful to see someone that seems to have a genuine concern for the lost. I pray that Chris would come to the recent knowledge Todd White has come to in the understanding that the law is perfect in converting the soul, just like Jesus used with the rich, proud young ruler. So let's keep these guys in our prayers. As always, leave your thoughts and comments below. And until next time, take care and God bless.